Hey everybody, so let's talk about heating and cooling your schoolie or your tiny house, uh, whether you decide to be off-grid or plugged into shore power. You have a couple of options. Let's check out what we've done this last year um, and just hopefully you can pull uh, what you want from it and hopefully it helps you with your build or just you know your tiny house or schoolie in general. First thing that we did uh, was we ripped all the insulation out of the school bus um, that originally came with it. We went down to bare metal and then we stepped in and we did a closed cell spray foam insulation by Foam It Green. It was a DIY foam kit. I'll actually post a link below. Um, and I feel like that really sealed it up. We sprayed the floor, the sides, inside of that wall cavity uh, behind the chair rail, uh, which is pretty deep. Um, and uh, we also did the ceiling as well. And I think that really helps seal up anything. Uh, so the only place there was any kind of like air leaks would be the windows. Um, but I think that really, really did help. What a lot of people don't really like to do are cover windows. Some people do prefer more open windows, and I totally get it. I planned on doing the same. Um, but realistically, when we were working on the bus in cold weather in uh, West Texas, it was really cold, and I started kind of rethinking my covering the windows deal. So instead of just covering four windows, we ended up covering quite a few. In fact, you can kind of see uh, mostly the back there though. That's all like the bunk room, the closet, the bedroom, and really there, I mean, we were going to cover the windows anyway with the headboard or the closet, and I didn't want my stuff being shown or being seen from the outside. So we went ahead and just covered the windows. Um, also like where my pantry is, I covered that window. Um, it wasn't going to be used anyway. So uh, covering the windows does help um, with the heat loss and stuff because these are bus windows unless you're planning on replacing them all, which we didn't. Um, but, you know, that's just something else to think about as well. Um, second, uh, the windows that we did leave open, I actually, uh, I sewed Reflectix inside of the curtains. So, although it doesn't reflect anything, it does add that barrier, and it has really helped keep the heat or the cold out, or keep the heat and cold in, whatever we're trying to accomplish, it has helped a lot. Um, so I definitely, you know, suggest doing some kind of insulation over the windows. Um, and which is great, you know, with the curtains, I can take them off, you know, I can open them and close them or whatever. Um, and then we also use Reflectix, as you can see on that window right there on the door. Um, I haven't really figured out what I'm going to do with that, but uh, right now that works. When we drive, we take it off. Also on the windshield, we have uh, the big Reflectix that goes around as well as on the driver's window. Um, and that does reflect the sun and it's just a huge space. Um, that's usually the hottest or the coldest part of the bus is in that stairwell or right by the windows. Uh, so, you know, insulating that um, with Reflectix has really helped. And I also put a curtain up and that obviously helps. Um, and I've even seen some people hang their coats um, up across the, the windshield and I think that helps too. So um, there, you can get creative with some of your ideas and that's kind of what's fun about building your own bus is that you, know, you can get creative in, in all these different ways. The next thing that we do is we actually follow the weather. So if it's going to be too hot, we just go up north and when it's too cold, we go down south. And that seemed to have worked for us this last year. We did not have a rooftop air conditioner or heater um, on the bus. You can see that we do now right up there. We installed it this last October. We've made it almost a whole year without having one in the bus. Um, so following the weather is really good if you plan on just using the least amount of power as possible. Um, or even if you do want to be plugged into shore, it's just it's better on all your utilities in general. So um, that's also a little RV life hack. You know, follow the weather. Go where it's cooler, go where it's warmer, whatever, you know, whatever, whatever kind of adventure you want to have and how comfortable you want to be. It's up to you. Everybody's different. So since we didn't have a rooftop air conditioner when we first started our journey, um, we, besides following the weather, in order to keep cool um, when it was hot, we would actually just open the windows as you can see like we do now. We still open the windows even with a rooftop air conditioner. You don't really want to put all that strain on your appliances if you don't have to. Um, we leave the door open right there. Uh, the back door sometimes goes open and kind of if there's a wind you know, blowing from that direction it'll just sweep through the whole house and it feels wonderful. Um, you know, opening the windows, having fans. Each kid has a fan in their bunk. We have a fan in our bedroom and there's a fan that is on the dash of the bus that points down the hallway. And that keeps it relatively cool, uh, depending on how hot, you know, it is outside and, you know, what the wind is. Um, but we did that for a really long time and that was totally fine. Um, you do let in some moisture depending on where you're at, so that would be the only downside. But dehumidifier, you know, things like that, that would help. But we didn't have any of that when we first started. And that honestly helped when we were off grid. 
using the fans wasn't a problem either. So uh, our panels were able to provide, you know, all the cool that we needed, um, you know, and then just get really still in the hottest parts of day. Or if it gets too hot, find a swimming spot, an RV park with a pool or a lake or a river or something like that always makes things better when it's too hot. Um, but also uh, when it was cold off grid, you know, whenever having to use our propane heater, we have a Dickinson, it's for a 39 foot boat. Um, and we would run that. We actually have ours closer to the ground because heat rises. And I know some people do put theirs up higher. I don't really know if I understand that because the floor was always drafty um, while we were building. So we knew that we wanted it closer to the floor. So we did do that um, because you know the heat's always gonna go up anyway. So uh, that does work. The area that it's immediately next to does get warm. The bathroom gets really warm um, and that little area stays well. However, because the bus is so long, it doesn't really travel down that hallway very well. Uh, so, you know, the front of the bus might be warm and the back of the bus might be cold. Um, so, it was okay, um, but there, you really need to have like a fan or something to move that air um, up and down that hallway just because that heat will just get stuck. Um, so, that would be like my only complaint about um, like the propane heaters and stuff in a, in a really long bus. Because although it was made for a 39 foot boat, um, it's just a really long hallway in that bus, so I, I don't know, I mean, it just doesn't move very well. Um, but if we're plugged in, something that we did add was the electric heaters. We did some floor heaters. Um, we put one in the front of the bus, pointing to the back, and then one un under our bed, uh, pointing to the front. And then it just it heated it up really, really well. And with that propane furnace going, I mean, it was super toasty in the bus. Um, we probably, sometimes we didn't even use the propane heater, we just used the floor heaters and that worked. But floor heaters do scare me, you know, there is that tendency to, to start a fire. So I think um, I'll be leaving my floor heaters here and then maybe getting like a radiant heater um, instead. Um, but that movement in, in the hallway really does help uh, push that hot air around. So if you're having issues, um, you know, or having questions about different heaters that you might be using, um, when it comes to designing your bus, just keep that in mind, uh, you know, let that heat move, you know, throughout the bus. So however you decide to come up with that. Okay, and then whenever we did decide to install the rooftop air conditioner, it also came with a heater and a dehumidifier. We figured if we we're going to install something, it might as well be something that's all three, right? Um, we found a really great deal at Camping World. It did not work out, and I am not recommending Camping World ever to anybody. It took weeks. We ended up getting our money back, um, and I went through Amazon. I paid an extra $40, and it was totally worth it. Uh, stay away from Camping World. They have terrible customer service, and I've... I've never, it was just awful. So don't go through them for anything. Um, but Amazon was great. Uh, so when we installed the rooftop air conditioner, we actually ran it on generator power first. Uh, that was our first experience. It worked great. Uh, then we plugged, now we're plugged into shore power and it works great. Um, let me tell you a little bit about it. Um, so it is an Atwood. Um, it worked really well in 90 and 80 degree weather to keep us cool. It would keep the bus when it was like in the 98, it would it would be like 78 or 80 degrees um, but then you know obviously if it's cooler I mean it keeps it a really great temperature in there um, it keeps the front of the bus uh, here my meal it keeps the front of the bus really cool because that's really where it is it's um, right in my kitchen and then uh, it almost makes it to the back bedroom uh, it just doesn't it just can't push that far um, but it does do well because it's right in the middle of the hallway so it's pushing air from the front to the back back to the front and then we also have our fan in the front that we still keep on sometimes um, to help push that air to the back. Um, and then we'll have the fans on in the kids' rooms and then our room and it'll just kind of keep it going if we don't want to have uh, the windows open. Like if it's raining or the wind's blowing like dust and stuff, we'll close it up, we'll get it all sealed up tight and then we'll turn our air conditioner on and be spoiled for a little while. Um, but you know, you don't always have to use it. Uh, I think we definitely got spoiled <laughs> having it, so um, I haven't been having to wean myself off of it again. Um, just, you know, to only use it when I really need it. But it does work really well, and I really think it's because, you know, it's in the middle of the bus, and it can move the air. Um, I would, in the future, install maybe a mini split in the back bedroom of the bus, uh, because I think that would work out really, really well. We have the deck area. Um, to put it on so um, if you did get an air conditioner one does work in a 40 foot bus uh, but that extra one in the back would totally it would just make it great so uh, just I don't know something to think about um, and then also uh, the heater that's attached with it 
it works really well. I don't have to use the propane furnace. I don't have to use the floor heaters. That one heater, it heats up the whole bus. It even says that it didn't work um, in like, if it was below 32 or 27 degrees outside, but I've used it um, when it was that cold and it worked fine and it kept us all very toasty. Um, I do have to turn it off in the morning because it gets too hot sometimes, so it does work really, really well. I believe it's, it's an Atwood uh, 15026 is what it is. Um, also, something that RVers also do that I've learned is that they also, um, they'll use curtains to section off the house. So if you want it cooler or warmer in one section of the bus. So I do have curtains all down the hallway kind of sectioning things off obviously for privacy, um, you know, for the bathroom and such. We also do use it to kind of control the temperature in one space. I prefer it all to be open and just the air to kind of move throughout because we really can be anywhere in the bus at any time of day. But it is something that people use. Um, and again, these are buses. They're not meant to be lived in, uh, but they're really, really awesome recycled. You just have to kind of figure out what works for you and where you're comfortable at. Everybody has their own comfort levels. Um, and uh, again, you know, uh, follow the weather. That's another great thing. Like it's February, it's in Arizona, um, feels 70 degrees outside. It's wonderful. Um, don't even have to use the heater or the air conditioner. Um, but I'm super happy that we have it because if we do want to go somewhere hot, we won't be miserable. If we want to go somewhere cold, we won't be miserable. Um, so it really does open the doors a little bit for us um, as far as you know where we can actually go because we would stay away from places that were really hot. Like if it gets 120 degrees here in the summer, we're probably not going to be here. But um, but to know that we could stay if we wanted to is really cool. Um, I'll definitely find a park with like a pool or something. But uh, we don't plan on staying anywhere where it's that hot. We do plan on to continue to follow the weather. Um, but plus, you know, it keeps our animals happy too, uh, and then we're able to get outside and, you know, enjoy a little bit more and not be, not having to be restricted to the house, you know, if, if we don't want to. So, um, but anyway, those are my tips. I hope you guys benefited from that. I hope that was some good information. Um, let, me get, let me know if y'all have any questions, and please feel free to add any extra information on what you guys might do to keep cool or keep warm. And, um, in fact, I love the, the, uh, the wood stoves. I think those are amazing. Um, but anyway, that's just our experience. Hope everybody benefited. Have an awesome day.